Okay, welcome back to this tutorial on making music for GB Studio using Milky Tracker. In the last episode, we went through setting down some percussion and we went through using effects to make the drum channel sound like a snare and a bass drum. And now this next step is going to be adding on a little bit of a bass line because I find that then you've got your rhythm and bass set down and then you can start noodling about setting down some melodies as well. So if you remember from the first video, we're going to use uh, channel 3 to be our bass channel and as you remember from before as well we need to uh, make sure that we're selecting an instrument that actually works with channel 3 um, so that's starting at instrument 8 any of these labeled channel 3 here now I can't remember exactly how they all sound so why don't we bring up the instrument editor and try and find a decent bass sound okay that's alright let's okay that's a little bit twangy Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's all right, isn't it? I quite like that one. So number four and number one were okay. Yeah, we got a whole host of different options. Maybe I think maybe number one's all right. Mm, maybe a bit fizzy. Well, it doesn't really matter. It's very easy to change anyway. Why don't we stick? Why don't we go with four for now, and then we can mess around with it later. Right. So this is going to be a little bit of on-the-fly composition now, but how are we going to want the bass to sound? Well, I think to start out with, you want some kind of introductory notes. Now, if you're not into music theory, I recommend you try and keep it simple. I try and think of everything in very simple chord patterns, maybe something like an Iron Maiden song. Iron Maiden famously composed many, many songs using something a very simple kind of pattern in E minor key uh, with an E, C, D some kind of variety of that sequence of notes. So let's do something simple just to illustrate, why don't we? Now, right, yeah, so let's, let's take that E3 note there. So we are in channel three, we're gonna press space to record, and we're gonna have ourselves an E3 note. There it is, E3, pressed it. So we hear how it sounds. Yeah, so what you notice straight away is that it just goes on and on and on. So let's do a couple of things. Let's firstly set the volume of that. Um, we can set the volume using effect C. So let's go to this uh, effects part starting with the pink, press the record button. I'm gonna type C and I give it a volume of say 30. So the trick to, to setting the duration of notes in Milky Tracker is to essentially set volumes to zero in between somewhere. So why don't we set the duration? If we, for example, tried putting a volume of zero there, it's going to cut the bass note off at that point. Yeah. There we go. So let's give ourselves a little bit of intro, shall we? So we got boop, boop. That's what I want to do. Let's try it. What if we stick another note here? Whoops, not a C though. We want to keep it on a nice E. So if you want a short note, we're going to have to take the volume back to C3 and then quickly cut it off again. That's it. We do it again. Give ourselves a nice big long E. Uh, C, keep it at 30. And we want to kind of stop it there, I think. Let's set it to zero. We get our note back here. Set it to 30 again. And then it's going to be a quick staccato. All right, so that's just setting a little bit of bass there just to kind of set the tone. Now, <clears throat> there are various different things that you can do. Let's just save the documents just to keep it safe. Um, but I think that probably to start with, I like to, I like to just have a kind of a step into the song with a bit of an intro like that. So um, do we want to do that twice? Yeah, why don't we do that twice? So we make this one here zero as well. So that should now... Oh, actually, we don't want to. I remember now. We've got to, we've got to copy that bass into uh, 
the second uh, sequence because if you remember the first sequence sequence had the tempo set on it let's go to sequence one and paste this in there right how does that sound Yep. Just kind of trying to build it. Okay, so now that's going to be enough of the intro, I think, that kind of thing. So let's give ourselves uh, a totally new sequence now. And now I think we kind of want the song to kick in. So we probably... I think actually let's not copy and paste that because we want to make it now sound a bit different. So when your song kicks in, in my opinion anyway, you you want it, you want the drum beat to actually get going now. Like we've done a kind of snarey bass drummy intro, but we want the we want the drums to get going. So um, what channel were we using? We were using eleven, I think, weren't we? Instrument eleven, yeah. So instrument eleven. We are we know how to do instrument eleven. We know how to do drum track, don't we? Because we've basically been doing it in the last video. So we can only use C. And we're going to now have a proper drum beat. So uh, we were using E, C, 1 as our actual bass drum. And we're using E, C, 2 as, as our snare. Yeah. And we can actually pretty jolly well copy that and stick it on repeat because we're not going to be going nuts. And this is all just just to illustrate. Yeah. That sounds kind of like a drum beat, doesn't it? You have to take my word for it maybe. Whoops, I'm pressing control C, which I don't think you're allowed to do. Right. Is that going to take us all the way? Not quite. Uh, paste again. Yeah, that should do it. That should give us a nice uh, whole repetition of drum beat. Okay, so if you want to go for a bit of an Iron Maiden gallop or something, you want your bass to be playing much more frequently than that. We're going to go with the simple pattern of E, C's and D's. Which is a boop, boop. Ha! Yeah, not on that effect, we're not. Uh, what did we use for the drum, uh, for the bass, sorry, we used instrument, uh, what is that, B? I thought it was that one there, wasn't it? Uh, channel 3, 1, maybe that's an 8. Yeah, we'll use that. So, give me something like, you want to do something like a... So... How do we get that kind of short, almost like finger-picked staccato kind of notes? Well, we're now arming recording. You can see that my um, little blue cursor is in channel three, and we are gonna give ourselves a number of E3s. We're gonna set the volume like we did before to 30, and we're gonna try setting it immediately back to zero straight away. Um, because that should just give us uh, a short note. So what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm alternating between having volume playing and having uh, silence to, to cut the note short. Yeah, so um, we should be able to, let's just grab that and copy and paste it. That gives us a nice kind of short staccato, finger-picked, uh, maideny sort of bass. A couple more, a couple more. It's a good idea to kind of think in your head how you want the song to sound if you can. Uh, we don't want that many. Think about how you want it to sound in your head because um, it'll help you out. I think we want to change it here. So now we're going to go down to the C. Yeah. But not that one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, I think we want eight. Uh, and then we're going to do the same trick again, which is rapidly alternating between the two volumes. We're rapidly alternating now between the volume 30 and the volume 0, the volume 30 and the volume 0. Uh, try not to make any typos, but, uh, you know, easily rectified if you do. Right. 
How's that one? Nah, too many. Bo, 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 bo. Yeah, we want it to switch to a D here. So actually, if you want to edit a note, you don't need to change any of the other parameters there. You can actually just um, go in recording mode and press the note you want it to be. What have we got now? No, that's too few, isn't it? Yeah, no, let's undo that. Let's undo that. Come on, settle down. Settle down. We need to fill this in. Uh, let's let's put those back as C's, shall we? And then we hit the D's here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> got to count them up. See, this is the thing. You gotta, it's kind of hard to visualize. I think this is where we want the D's to start. A whole lot. Yeah, well, obviously we've got to put the durations in because otherwise it just sounds like a really long note. Um, I wonder if I can actually just, probably can just copy and paste the actual effect. That would be nice, wouldn't it? Because everything is using the same alternation between volume 30 and volume zero. Maybe I can actually just copy and paste my effect settings. That would be nice. Uh, let's try it. Yeah, you can. That's really that's really good. That makes life a little bit easier, hey. Uh, so let's just paste those volume settings, telling it to switch quickly between zero and thirty volume to give us that short staccato sound. Let's have a listen. Yeah, and we're gonna want we're obviously gonna want a couple of repetitions of that. So let's just put this one here back to two. And I think that will do for a quick bass track. Let's hear what our progress has been so far before we move on to the next video to put in some melody. So we just press enter and listen to what we got. We got this kind of s intro with some longer bass notes just to try and build a bit of suspension. We haven't repeated it because we don't want to lose the front row which was used for the volume effect. Uh, sorry, the speed effect. And now we're going to kick in with the full drum beat and our Iron Maiden pattern of ECD. You can very rarely go wrong with an E minor ECD uh, progression, depending on what sound you want. Right, we've got some, we've got some drums, we've got some bass, and we're going to lay down some melody tracks in the next video. See you there.